What's up? Are you thinking about starting your new career in trucking? Or are you already in trucking and just need some answers? Well, you came to the right place. Today I'm talking about how to choose the right truck driving school and also watch up to the end because I'm also going to be talking about what endorsements should you get on your license. Welcome back. Appreciate you coming, checking me out. All my new people, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button. Everybody that ain't hit it subscribe and like button that already been here, please help me out. Hit it. Let me get right to it. Um, today, I'm going to help you to find the right truck driving school that's going to be best fit you, that's going to get you everything that you need. Now, it's a lot of truck driving schools that will teach you the basic skills like if they not teaching these things like the state CDL knowledge, pre-trip inspection, driving safety, air brakes, combination vehicles, law books, and trip planning. If they not teaching that basic thing right there, you might need to be going somewhere else because there's like the bare minimum that you need to know to get your CDL to actually be a little successful like on the road. Now, if you look, if you find a good truck driving school, a good one gonna teach you all that I just said. It's gonna teach you mountain drive, and they're gonna teach you night drive, and they're gonna teach you how to hook and uh, hook from the trailer. It's gonna teach you how to drive. You gonna have a, a, a choice of driving manual or automatic only. Like uh, what else? They'll probably have. Uh, it basically, it would be a lot of hands-on training. So a lot of the good ones, too, have um, simulators that you can sit on and actually, like, be on a computer and you simulate you shifting gears and stuff like that. That's, that, that's a real good truck driving school when they got all that stuff like that. And that that's very important if you, like, planning on going over the road as a truck driver because over the road, you, you don't know what kind of obstacles that you might run into. Uh, say for instance, even if you drive in an automatic or if you drive in a, um, a manual, you need to know how to drive on mounts. Like when you're going up a mount, like how what gear you need to be in and what gear you need to be in when you're going down a mount. Um, you need to know like what speeds you need to be going when you're going into curves and all kind of stuff like all that safety stuff like that. How far ahead you need to be looking when you drive it down the highway, like you don't supposed to be looking to just voice in front of you. You need to be looking like miles ahead to see what's really going on. Things like that. Like if they teaching stuff like that, that's going to help you later on while you actually driving. That's a good truck drive school. Now the school that I went to, they went to a good truck drive school. When, when we got our CDLs, I don't know how in the world did we get our CDLs. Like, uh, when I left, I ain't. Even, I had never hooked up to no truck before. I had never even opened up the back of a truck before. I barely knew how to drive stick. We had then practiced backing and then like that. All we did was back in a straight line. That's it. And that that was our our experience. And we got our CDL some kind of way. But over the years, man, I had to learn like the hard way on how to do all this stuff. And that's why I, that's why I made this channel. Cause I want you to not have to go through the stuff that me and a lot of my friends had to go through. You can go ahead and, and learn all this stuff beforehand and be successful eat on early instead of having to wait years to get to that point. But um, anyways, um, what else? Uh, oh, also when you go to a, a truck drive school, you need to be asking them like if you was to fail something. Um, do you have to repeat the course? Do they have like with you, if say for instance, if you take the uh, permit test, can you take it like multiple times? Do they like uh, make you like start all the way over? Do you just, can you just start from there? Um, also, if you fail into the driving pause, you need to be trying to find out, do they let you do a repeat on that if you fail or do you have to start all the way over? Do you got to pay more money? Like this stuff right there is important, man, because a lot of people, um, 
go to the CDL train that they don't pass the first time. They don't pass the second time. They have to keep on going. Um, I know some schools, they'll let you do that for free, but some of them, they're going to charge you every single time you do that. So you need to be finding that out before you even go, especially if you ain't got the money like that to be trying to keep paying on it or whatever. Um, what else? Um, or another um, thing for a good tri truck drive school, they usually going to have a good connection with uh, potential employers like uh, companies that's like hiring new drivers fresh out of school use that have like a, a, a pretty big list of um, trucking companies that are looking for people and it's up to you to go through all that the um, the different things that they offer what type of trucks it is and all that if it's automatic stick I mean flatbed driving blah 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 you need to go through through all that and make sure that it fits you uh that i ain't gonna lie to you when they they gonna sometimes they have some of them people the recruiters come in and all of them gonna sound good the stuff that they saying that's their job they want to make you feel like they the best company on earth they and all i'm gonna say they focus on safety and this and that and blah 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 but a lot of this stuff is not true you have to like do your due diligence like actually go check this stuff out and ask questions to other drives that actually work for their own companies and stuff like that and if they a lot of times too man if, if it's a drive and they saying that they making three four thousand five thousand dollars and stuff like that a week you need to like be like oh really like oh you is it a, a stove or something you can show me man or you know just to make sure that they ain't lying because there's a lot of drive to lies about the money that they make man they don't make their money like that for real okay what else um i guess that's about it man when you look for a truck drive school man and just make sure that when you go to you pay attention because you don't want to um be a spent your money or the went all the way to another state or something like that and and you fail at it and you just give up and just come back home like you don't want to do nothing like that man just go on go there keep trying do it get up out of us and, and go out there and get your money like don't 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 let nobody discourage you until let you feel like you can't do it because with another person do that don't try to compare yourself to nobody because of what somebody else do it don't mean you can do it that way because a lot of times guys are already been had some kind of uh training or something like that and come out though to get their cdl but they don't be telling you that they be trying to act like they just got skills or something like that man okay now i'm gonna get to the portion where um uh, when it comes to endorsements the endorsements that i feel like that's important for you to get um now, when it comes to a lot of these companies that you work for, the more endorsements you have, a lot of times, the more likely you will get a load. Uh, sometimes you go to places, um, I know like in New York, um, and it'd be hard to get a load up out of it, or even even Florida, Florida bad for loads, man. They, you, they got a lot of loads going in, but they don't have a lot on coming out like that, for real, unless you like dealing with something like produce or something like that. But, um, having something like a uh, hazmat or something like that or a tweet cord um that'll help you get loads easier because it's not a lot of drivers that like have that or if they do have it, they ain't got their experience carrying that type of stuff and you are more likely to get a load like anywhere in like you can go anywhere in america and you will like probably get in or getting you a load or whatever Especially with that tweet call, man. Like, I can't tell you how many times, man, that tweet call that helped me out when I was driving fuel. Um, they had, I know a couple of times, they had, like, a shortage on fuel. And it was only, like, a couple of places you can go. But you had to have that tweet call to go there. And, man, I, I went there. And that was, like, my only way that I was making money, man. And it was other drivers that didn't have it. It was messed up. They had to sit at the house, man, at the time. And you don't want to be in no situation like that. Um, your doubles and triples is important too if you plan on working for like a local company a lot of local companies uh, especially like uh, whether it's FedEx, Ground um, Yellow Freight places like that they, play, they pay by the hour SPO um, usually they be paying something like $23, $24 an hour they, that's one of their requirements to have doubles and triples on your license so uh, you might want to go and get that on your license too while you're in school. Um, there's hazmat, doubles and triples, and also tankers. 
Now, if you get your tankers and your hazmat at the same time, it's going to be X on your license. It'll be like a combination of both. That's good to have on your license because sometimes, too, when you work for uh, companies, they might have like it might not be a, a like a actual tank that you put them, but it'd be like these tanks that they have, like uh, it'd be like in bulk they'll put on your truck. And if you got your tankers, you can carry stuff like that. Um, I also recommend getting your um, passenger endorsement too. Um, that's basically like for bus driving and stuff like that. And the way I look at it is, um, if you if you get into commercial driving, you should have a, a open door for like anything. You should just you should be able to to adapt to anything. Cause who's to say like something was to happen, you lose your job. And then all of, you know, it might not be no truck driving job, which is around around you. But what if it was a, a some like school bus or like a, a local bus and uh, company where you at that's hiring right now, and you need some money right then, you could just hop in the bus and start, you know, driving the bus. You wanna you wanna be able to like keep on working, get your money no matter what. So yeah, I recommend getting that passenger endorsement on your license if you can. Um. They got another endorsement for school bus. That probably be the only one I leave it up to you if you should get that or not. Um, but personally, I definitely the hazmat, the tanker, and the passenger. Them, them the top three I think you should get. That's important. Like that'll open up a lot of doors for you, man. You always gonna have a job some kind of way. Um, with hazmat, a lot of people get scared when they um when they hear hazmat. But man, with hazmat, it's not as bad as you think. Uh, hazardous materials is paint, glue, Clorox, ammonia, like like a lot of household stuff that you get is considered hazmat. And that's like stuff that you carry when you're doing like um, groceries and stuff like that. It might not even be a whole lot of it on your truck, but you still, if it's a uh, thousand and one pounds or more, you got to have your hazmat and um, placard your truck. So it's good to have that, man. So you'll be able to get them loads or whatever. But like I said, it ain't, it ain't that bad. So like uh, if you go to a company that basically all they pull is hazmat, then that's different because they might do like stuff that's uh dangerous when breathing, corrosive stuff, um stuff that hit your skin and might burn you, uh explosive, whatever, you know. But to each his own, man. Some people like carrying that type of stuff like that because when you carrying that stuff like that, you you usually get paid pretty good. I not to carry explosives myself. Me personally, I don't like it. I I just, I don't like that feeling of thinking like, damn, man, that's about to hit this truck, man. I'm going to be blowed to pieces, man. Like, that that ain't no good feeling, but like, some people like to live on the edge. I ain't that one. But, um, but anyways, man, I appreciate you coming, checking me out. Um, please do your due diligence. Like I said, research all this stuff. Make sure these places good. Like, with, with uh, technology now, um, it, it show reviews of all these different places, like all these schools. So look at the reviews and see what other people saying at these schools and do the same thing when it comes to these companies like actually working for them. Look at all the reviews and stuff that they got and see what exactly what the driver's saying. You got to weed through like what, the, what they saying because a lot of drivers complain about little, little stuff that don't even really be in bad like that for real. But when it comes to stuff like pay and stuff like that, look and see if it's a, a constant complaint about pay or not being able to come home and stuff like that. If, if it's a constant thing like that, then yeah, you might want to look the, the other direction or whatever, especially pay because that's the, the whole reason you're out there. Until next time, though, be safe out there. Thank you for watching.